Wow, welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. Um, it's your boy Marvin. Um, <laughs> some news has come up about um, some news articles about Usher um, revealing that PDD give him STDs um, and his obsession with BBCs. This is absolutely crazy. I just don't know what to say. It's, it's quite shocking. Sometimes what you don't know we look at these artists as sometimes role models you know some people even look at look at them as gods as idols but sometimes in this market of music business there's a lot goes on that meets the eye which is absolutely coming out again you know coming out with with famous people look at p diddy um, the charges he could be facing and a lot of harm he's actually done but which is not proven yet but I think a lot of these things will, 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 will come out how can someone for me be in the news that much get your place raided what for they must have something on you or looking for something or evidence and it always triggers one person comes forward and then they all come forward it just works like that um, for some reason I did do a video yesterday on PDD my thoughts of him and what I actually think but like I said we can't we can only speculate but he hasn't been charged at this moment for anything but with so many people coming out with different things it's unbelievable so I'm gonna um, play this video and we're gonna basically really really pick at it and pick up the subject the host is talking about on culture spill so let's get straight into the video do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have with her? It's something fishy about that, bro. Honey, I'm going to need you to grab a chair for this one because things just got for Ricky and the Diddy Camp. See, when Cassie mentioned in her lawsuit that Diddy forced her to hook up with male hookers while he watched. Apparently, she wasn't the only one involved in the free call. Diddy was also getting some big black. And is Usher finally opening up about how he also got an STD from Brother Love? Told you, you need to be comfortable for this one. They had to be for both of them. They was in the room. Right? You're right. It's a freak off session. Right? She said it's a freak off section. If she says a freak off section, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Girl, trust Jean Deal to give you the tea you really want to hear about Diddy. And one thing about Jean, he never minces his words. Well, he's been spilling about Diddy for years with a lot of people calling him crazy. But do y'all realize that the things Jean has been saying over the years are the same things that have come out about Diddy as of late? Now some people warn the masses of what's really going on because Diddy's so famous and the guy spilling the beans he's just basically telling it how it is and some people find it hard to take until it comes out in world media that's something serious at the end of the day but why would he come out on a live podcast and say those things about someone so famous. You don't do that unless you have some serious inside information. You just don't. Simple. Now, the freak offs that he is talking about is what Cassie mentioned in her lawsuit, where she said the freak offs involved costumes like masquerade masks and lingerie. And they continued for years, taking place at high end hotels across the United States and in Diddy's homes. Apparently, Cassie was required to dress up in lingerie for a freak off, and Diddy insisted she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of the black men he hired to hook up with her. And Diddy recorded everything. Based on what Cassie said, she would delete videos from these incidents that had been shot on her phone. But Diddy told her he still had access to all those videos. What Jean is saying is that it doesn't make sense that Cassie was the one who went looking for the male hookers and then just watched as they did their thing with Cassie. And I would understand why Jean would insist that Diddy was also getting some BBC himself. I mean, we've all heard the stories of Diddy being on the DL and some of them from people who experienced 
it firsthand. Like, can we talk about Usher and what he had to go through when he was under Diddy's wing? When Usher was first signed to LaFace Records as a young teen, he was given to Diddy as a mentor. And at 14 years old, Usher moved to New York to stay with Diddy. Yep, you heard that right. Usher was only 14. And Usher... Wow. It's, there's a lot of stories and interviews I've seen of Usher about this younger life where I don't think he's actually telling us everything what happened. I think to protect his fame, uh, his music, and especially I think he knows a lot more than sometimes he's letting on. But I think a lot of people have spoken up for him at the end of the day, but I think he's actually given us clues that things weren't perfect um, between him and Diddy. And like I said, I think he was abused. That, that is my, I think he was abused, even though he might have thought it's just something they do at parties and they're famous. I think he was abused to it all, and I think he saw a lot, especially at a young age. Usher himself said that the things he witnessed when he was staying with Diddy at what Diddy called the flavor camp, a boy his age should never have experienced Thank those you. things. So I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Was In fact, according to Usher, the things he witnessed were so wild that as a dad, he would never let his son attend Diddy's Slave Account. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> you Hell know? no. You know, there were actually people who... This is, this is interesting because now I think he's a lot older. He sees the stardom and the lights and he wouldn't see his own children go through that. So what he was, he was exposed to as well, it seems like it was an everyday thing for him that it didn't seem special anymore because it just went on. It happened so many times, it becomes natural. This is the feeling I've got from a lot of these artists that went to Diddy's dues. Witnessed Diddy exposing Usher to very questionable things. Like Ed Lover once recalled the time when he went to a club and Usher was drinking straight from a bottle in the company of Diddy. And he was just 14 or 15 at the time. Now can you imagine what else was happening behind closed doors? Baby, your guess is as good as mine. There was actually a time when Usher was on the cover of Essence magazine and he sort of let it slip that something did go down between him and Diddy. First of all, he was very cool when asked about other things like how he would continue to pursue movie projects and somewhere down the road a new album and several business ventures but according to the publication when the talk turned to his time living with diddy usher became surprisingly restrained and he said i want to save some ish for my book one day i'll put it this way there was a lot of sex okay at this point i think i'm a little scared for usher because it hasn't ended well for people who have written books mentioning diddy but maybe with this is what i'm saying you have to be careful what when you're talking about a big fish that gave you an opportunity to get famous. I think he's got things, the, the, the videotaping he's done, I think he's got things on people that they don't want this exploited because he could, Diddy could turn around and say, hey, look, um, well, they're smiling, they're laughing, they're enjoying the party scene, the sex, the good times, the orgies. So I've got that as my protection. He's quite smart in doing that because like I said, he's given something, but taking them away from them, that it can that affect them in the long run at the end of the day, or what you feel about your idol, the artist that you like. Because Usher's a big man. And when you hear him about getting it, it just makes you wonder. You just don't see them the same way as what you used to. With everything coming to light about Brother Love, Usher could actually successfully put out a book that would spill all the tea. By the way, it's not just been about what Usher himself has said. I mean, there have been comments Diddy has made about Usher that were just pretty sus. Like that one time when he was telling Kevin Hart about waking up next to Usher. It's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and... I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's how, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother. Wow. Wow. Things slip out. And you could just tell something there. That was an awkward, awkward moment. Jesus. 
Yeah, not something you want to tell your family about with your kids. Other we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? And there was this other time when Diddy was complimenting Usher, and it really looked like he was also checking him out and talking about Usher eating his cereal in his kitchen. Take your time with it. Breathe it in. Yeah, they are when you go see this for you. This ain't for nobody else but you. You take that time, boy. I see you. Fly ass motherfucker, baby. You were in the kitchen. Eating all my cereal. <laughs> now, there have also been allegations that have been around for a while. Look, T, this, this is crazy sometimes. He's one crazy guy at the end of the day. I think sometimes you've got too much money, you've got too much fame. You can have any bottles, any drug you like, but I think sometimes famous people, especially him, takes it to levels and it comes down to bite you because sometimes. They get so caught up in the scene that it, 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 it becomes open and natural, which is not always a good thing. Sometimes you need a bit of privacy and you cannot really see that here. Saying that Diddy gave Usher an STD. In fact, that is allegedly one of the things that was supposed to come up in the book that Kim Porter was writing, which disappeared just before she died. Allegedly, the book covered in detail how Diddy was into BBCs and slept with different men on multiple occasions, and how Usher's mom confronted Diddy about allegedly being intimate with Usher and giving him an STD after she found out what was going on. Allegedly, Kim also had video footage of Diddy taking advantage of Usher but that also disappeared because just before she died someone broke into her house and only her laptops were stolen. Kim know all his deepest secrets you understand Kim knew why he was using the butt plug. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the same STD that Usher was getting sued over because there's a time a woman named Quantasia Sharpton along with the Jane Doe and John Doe who sued Usher claiming they all had relations with Usher. And they all said he risked their health by not telling them about his alleged herpes diagnosis and were seeking unspecified damages. The woman who did not identify herself said that she slept with Usher at least twice and after contracting herpes from him, him, her twins were stillborn so maybe he got that from Diddy also when it comes wow 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 a chain of reactions at the end of the day a chain of reactions and that amount of time the time they were actually talking about was the time uh, Usher was living with P Diddy oh my god it's amazing sometimes when you paint the picture and the puzzle comes together the answers start coming out, even though you don't want to really believe that you have to, because so many people are talking about it. That, it's just natural conversation now. I think, I do think P. Diddy has got away with a lot, and a lot of people are scared of him because of his status. I do think that. Mr. Diddy, we can't ignore the number of times people have said that they have receipts that he is definitely on the DL. For starters, Gene Deal previously said that he witnessed something very questionable when he was watching Diddy's door at a hotel. And he said, yo, Gene, watch the door, don't let nobody come through here. And I said, I watched the door. If I watched the door and him and a man ran out naked and I said that, I ain't nobody told me that. I saw that myself. There's also Jaguar Wright, who once talked about a lawyer who walked in on Diddy and Christopher Williams, and they did not even stop. When she walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams perform a out on Puff. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. And Exhibit also once revealed that- Wow, wow. It's like I said, too many people are coming out and exposing Diddy. It's like I said, sometimes it's an open shop. And when you're too open, people are gonna talk. That's just too much. That Diddy treated him to the gayest night of his life. So then, uh, you know, he, he's dealing his business. We go out and get a drink. You know, we sitting there bobbing to the music, and then she said, she pointed over the corner. It's two dudes kissing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this. 
You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, then there's girls in the club too. And then she pointed another direction. It's another dude over there like, but. In addition, there's how 50 Cent also said he couldn't believe it when Diddy wanted to take him shopping. Stop. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out. Nigga, we gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is fun. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it. And he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping? I mean, like, I paid for it. And I was like, what this nigga just said? <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him. I was like, this is <laughs> <laughs> 50 makes me laugh, he really does. Um, but it's, it's, it's like Diddy has tried it with a lot of people, and I think a lot of people have laughed it off and not taken it, they're not taking it seriously, but they're taking it serious now. <laughs> So if we are talking about Diddy being a You heard what he said, he's a bit of a fruit pop. I think he likes things his own way. If he doesn't get them, he'll try other ways um, to get you. It seems especially if he likes you. But I think there's a lot of, lot of people who knows what's going on and now voice their opinions more than ever because of social media obsessed with bbc's honey there's enough talk about that already i personally can bet that it's only a matter of time before men also start giving their accounts about what diddy did to them maybe usher is the one about to set that ball rolling like cassie did i'm gonna keep my ears rooted to the ground for that but meanwhile let me know your thoughts on diddy allegedly being obsessed with bbc's and do you think usher could possibly be building his story drop those thoughts in the comments section below I think that um, we're going to see over the next few months what the police or whoever's chasing him down have on him. And I think a lot of people, because he's still out, um, won't talk too much. But it's going to be interesting to see what does come out or how many men uh, come forward and tell their stories which will be more than interested to talk about. But, you know, the, the worrying thing is, is that young people, uh, many neighbours and other people had seen young people going into these parties at the end of the day. So I hope for his sake it isn't what we think it is. But look, we're just going to have to wait to see what comes out next about the life of P. Diddy. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow myself, Marvin, on Streamline Entertainment. And please like the video and support us by subscribing. Thank you, wherever you are in the world. Take care.